Before we begin, three messages. So, you've taken some of the advice that has come from Untethered.tv guests, built an app, and now you're turning your attention to generating some hard-earned revenue. Then you should be looking at Pontiflex app leads. Some of your peers who are using app leads are earning CPMs 100 times the industry average. And if you need any other reasons to start, I'll give you two more. You can run sign-up ads from top brands, the ones that you recognize, and it won't take your precious users out of your app. Go to appleads.com, that's A-P-P-L-E-A-D-S.com to sign up. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to, Macadamian. They delivered on time with incredible attention to detail, and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years, and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. Here's a riddle. How do you build native cross-platform mobile applications quickly without having to rewrite code and hire consultants at a huge cost? Titanium from AppCelerator. Called the easy button for mobile application development, it allows you to focus more on what's important, getting product out the door. Join the more than 1.5 million active developers who have created over 13,000 apps at www.accelerator.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Untether.tv. I'm your host, Rob Woodbridge, and this is, of course, the place we have casual conversations with mobile rock stars. My guest today is Scott Schwartzoff. Uh, really ecstatic to have Scott back. Uh, I spoke with him um, last August, so August of 2010, and uh, he was one of, I think, 18 people at this great company called Accelerator. Uh, this uh, and and they were uh, we we talked back then about mobile marketing, and uh, it was one of the most viewed episodes. It still is one of the most viewed episodes on Untether.tv uh, because of the nuggets. It was an honest one hour. If you can't if you've not watched that, don't stop. But it's linked up above this, obviously, uh, when it comes to... Uh, you can go back to it and watch it. Because it, it was full of nuggets, honest approach about mobile marketing. And uh, so I'm, I'm ecstatic to have Scott back to talk about another topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart. Obviously near and dear to Scott's and the folks at Accelerator uh, about mobile strategy. But before we get into mobile strategy, so much has changed, Scott. Over the yep. last 10 months around uh, what you guys are, it used to be 18 people. That's when, when we talked, right. 18 people doing everything right in marketing. Um, and you just gave me a quick tour of your office space. You're kind of uh, 25,000 square feet, 70 employees. First of all, welcome back. Thank you. Ecstatic Thank to you have you. Thank you very much. And wow, what a year for you guys. Uh, you guys yeah. are everywhere and doing everything, and uh, including... Uh, you know, supporting Untether, which I'm eternally grateful uh, for. Of course. Uh, but what, 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 have, what a year. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Where are you guys now? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're right. We're up. We're up at about 70 employees. Um, so, just, just a quick rundown on on our numbers here. So, well, actually, since you know, since since last August when you and I spoke and we had a great conversation, totally agree. And we were sort of kindred spirits here, of course, yes. Robin. You know, since that time, uh, we did close our Series B round uh, in late October with uh, with eBay uh, and Sierra coming in in addition to Storm Ventures. So we got some additional capital to kind of give us some runway to continue building out the platform. Uh, so that was that was a pretty key addition. And then uh, we definitely went on a rapid growth spurt. I mean, we went from <laughs> 18 to like 40 employees in a blink of an eye in like a couple months, and now we're up to 70. And we'll probably close the end of the year at 100, 120, something like that. So wow, that's incredible uh, growth. Yeah. So it's and and I think that you know it's it's stemming from you know when we're we're growing across the board, heavy investment in engineering, heavy investment in our platform, um, and then actually most recently, uh, from a company growth perspective, in January we acquired a company called Aptana. Uh, it was a very strategic move for us. Um, Ten of their Engineers, so actually their entire engineering team came over. Aptana, for those of you out there wondering what that is, that's it really is an enterprise grade IDE uh, development environment. And a lot of the feedback that we've been receiving over the last couple of years is, you know, love what I can do on the mobile side, but really would like to have some help on the tooling side. And so that's what Aptana brings to the party. 
What they also bring to the party is that they have 1.4 million developers using their web development IDE. And these are Python developers, Ruby developers, PHP developers, and so, so on and so forth. And so, you know, obviously growing our community is a strategic imperative for us as well. So we get a great, you know, IDE technology that we're now using, um, and I'll talk about that in a second, and then a passionate community of web developers that adds to our web developer base. And now we have about 1.5, you know, going on uh, 1.6 million web developers building applications for the web, obviously, for mobile devices and for uh, desktop devices. Um, so that's, you know, in terms of numbers, that's sort of where we're going. Um, uh, we also have today about 22,000 applications in the collective app source. Um, so we've grown, we're, we're growing that by about 3,000 a month. And to put that in perspective, that's about 100 apps a day. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. So, so you can, so actually your listeners can uh, download, um, let's say like a Hotel Tonight. Uh, it's a great app. Uh, it was built uh, by uh, one of our community members, uh, reached number one in the, in the travel app store and actually number 28 in the entire iPhone app store about a week ago. It uh, gets your GPS location, gives you local uh, deals on local hotels, you know, for, you know, in case you're, you know, stranded at, you know, some airport or you're kind of somewhere and you're like wondering where am I going to stay? Hotel Tonight kind of does that. There are other good apps that have come out. Uh, Wonderlist is a really good example. It's a to-do uh, list. I use it every day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Cross-platform, iPad, iPhone, desktop. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So they, um, and if you go on their blog, you'll just see how they thought about building a new business. And as we get in the strategy part, they actually chose Titanium not only as a technology solution, but as a way to, like, kickstart an entire company. And uh, so they got in market. They have over a million downloads. Uh, Get Glue, that's another good example. Um, NBC is a good example with Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and a couple other apps that are coming out. Um, so there's, you know, eBay's done a couple apps on our stuff. So there's a lot of interesting, engaging applications that are being built on top of our technology. But that 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 sort of gives you a quick rundown of where we've where we've come from. Well, you know, it's it's funny that you you uh, you mentioned Wonderless because uh, one of the things that uh, that I was looking for was an absolute was an application. It's a perfect example. I mean, uh, of a of an app. Um, I'm a to-do list is not just uh, iPhone or iPad specific. There needs to be a desktop component to this, and it needs to sync with the cloud. It needs to be enabled across all platforms. And uh, you know, I see a lot of great apps that are just iPhone or just yep. iPad, and those two don't communicate, so Correct. they're useless. Yep. That's what that what struck me with Wonderlist is that listen, I need something that is on everything and syncs with everything, and I don't have to yep. think about it. And yeah, I mean, how many how many devices do you have here, Rob, that you use on a daily basis? Well, I have I have three devices, right? Okay. Uh, which is my uh, my iPhone, my iPad, and my desktop. Yep. And my laptop, three devices every single day. Every day, and yep. and I think that's becoming more the norm, right? I mean, yep. we all have these uh, uh, devices that we you know we check our email in the morning. Maybe you know I have a laptop in my kitchen because <laughs> you know, it's the center of our my family's world. So I check that in the morning. Then I come into work and I'm on my desktop PC or my laptop, right? Yep. Uh, at lunch, you know, I'm on my iPhone, and maybe in the in the evening I'm on my iPad, kicking back on the couch. Yeah. So, Wonderlist is a good example of where the trend is going. To it's 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 not only mobile; it's also cloud. Uh, this whole exchange we were talking about this, you know, before um, uh, the the show started here. This whole tie together between mobile and cloud is such a powerful force. Um, Apple mentioned this obviously in a big initiative that they launched last week at WWDC, the iCloud, right? And many people immediately went to the uh, powerful connection uh, that we have now with the internet being the cloud and mobile devices. And that, you know, we, we need to, if you will, almost stop thinking about web and internet as interchangeable because they're not. What we're looking at is taking the best of the internet which is this always on connectivity. And we are adding in that engagement to Facebook. We're adding in that commerce case capability with, with PayPal. We're adding in that instant communication with Urban Airship. Now there yeah. these application experiences that are rich, native, and then to your point, contextual because they're across multiple platforms. 
right? And that that's where these mobile experiences are going. Um, and that's ultimately when we get in, you know, when we start talking about mobile strategy, those are the types of experiences that we typically start talking about with most of our clients on where where you can really push yourselves ahead of your competitors and really kind of be leaders in your own space when it comes to adopting mobile. You know, one of, one of the things that's so different between where you guys were uh, last year and where you are today um, is, uh, is, the, is the language that, the, that you're using. So, um, you know, you guys have evolved past th that app phase where a lot of companies that are in your space are still stuck in that, you know, building cross-platform apps. Right. right or uh, drag and drop apps. Every day, I, I I see another company that comes up and says, you know, now your boss can build an app, right? right. But that's not yeah. the point here, is it? Yeah, no, no, it is. It is not. What What's happened is that since we've been doing this for a couple of years now, a funny thing has happened. And the funny thing that happened is that we give any business the permission, if you will, to think about being in mobile. It's okay. You can do it. You can. <laughs> You can do it without killing yourself. Yeah. And so here's the interesting thing that happens is that once you start solving for this cross-platform pain, you realize that that becomes the tip of the iceberg and that immediately you start getting into discussions around, well, how is my three-tier web architecture going to adapt to this? Um, how am I going to adjust myself to basically become my own cloud service? And then when I start thinking about those that myself as a cloud service, and then I start thinking about, well, geez, I want all these other wonderful services. I want the social graph. I want to exchange transactions in my application. And so what's interesting is that, it, you know, it comes back to this issue of fragmentation. And we had defined fragmentation before as, you know, fragmentation of devices, right? Yep. Obviously lots of devices. Um, fragmentation of skills, right? I need to, my people need to have different skill sets. Um, fragmentation also on the devices themselves. So if it's a phone versus like a tablet, that's a different, you know, you've got it. That's a totally different user experience. Maybe the same core capabilities on the platform, very different when it comes to devices. And, and then finally, this fragmentation of the cloud where, and, and that's what we have. And again, it, you know, you and I were talking about this. You can only sort of understand the importance of the cloud and what it means when you understand that, you know, solving for fragmentation eventually will lead you to the cloud because ultimately it, what I want to do as a business is take my business and extend it into mobile. Right. And that means by definition, I am going to be carrying with me all of these, this baggage, if you will, or opportunity to put it more nicely of having these connected always on experiences that make the most of rich native applications right yeah. and that's where you're, and that's where we're at today right and and apple i think is you know signifying that that's you know they're agreeing basically that's where this whole trend is going um, so that, so there you go absolutely well you know one of the other big changes um, that that i've seen with you guys over the last little while uh, and maybe you can comment on this is that you touched on it a little bit which was you know uh, almost uh, very consumer focused last August, last summer, mm -hmm. leading up to this. Mm -hmm. um, but but something happened over that little period of time. Over this little period of time, is that obviously the enterprises came knocking, and 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 now there's there's it seems to be much more enterprise language in what you guys are talking about. So uh, not consumer apps. There's still a lot of them, but you're yeah. now you're starting to move into that enterprise play, right? Where companies are coming to you looking for this. Right. Uh, that's obviously a strategic direction that you. Guys yeah, are yeah, I mean it is. I mean it it is. Uh, it's something that, you know, certainly the enterprise is going through a change as well where they're getting the consumerization of, of, yes. of their own experiences, right? And yep. so these devices that we have, these mobile devices that we have are personal, or excuse me, are, are work devices when we check email and use our productivity apps during the day, and then they're personal devices in the evening. And so then what we have and what that sets up is that we can, you know, think about enterprise experiences as adopting some of these more engaging transaction oriented types of experiences that consumer apps have led the way on. And so it's a natural move for us and it's also a natural move of how mobile is going. Um, the other thing I'll also point out, an important point there is that uh, along with the enterprise addition to uh, our strategic direction, also is coming uh, mobile web, which actually um, uh, we just announced 
the, uh, a beta of this uh, last month, but a lot of our developers, because they're web developers and because they're looking for maximum reach, are coming to us and saying, look, apps are cool, um, but you know, I also need to be on, on the mobile web. And in our personal opinion has evolved from, well, apps are it, to actually, it's not either or, you actually need to have both. And you need to have a mobile optimized website and you need to have a rich application and they need to sort of complement each other. And most of our developers, even without Titanium, have built a mobile optimized website to have that coverage you know, so that you're there in all points of distribution. And especially enterprises, as they get into mobile, they may start with a mobile website or they may start with a simple application, but ultimately, you need you need a platform that has all of those capabilities, right? And so that's that's been addition as well. Well, it leads well into a, you know a, a precursor to strategy, which is some of the trends that you guys you as Accelerator are seeing and working. I mean, you're you're the VP of marketing, but you're also the uh, I guess the director or VP of uh, uh, developer relations. So mm -hmm. you're right at the front line of of pushing awareness and then getting feedback from from uh, what your platform is is doing from the developers. I mean, are, are are there some some you know big pillar trends that you're seeing out there that that are that are uh, driving your strategic direction or that uh, you know mm -hmm. that, that you can share with us? Sure. So a couple of trends. Um, so the first one we've we've touched on already, which is the tie-in of the cloud. Yeah. Um, and eighty. Uh, so we do this survey with uh, IDC on a quarterly basis, the Accelerator IDC Mobile uh, Mobile Report. Um, it's, it's, it was our initial foray to sort of some, some thought leadership around where mobile is going. Right. And, um, and increasingly we've moved from, you know, who's up and who's down in terms of platform priorities into some of these big trends that we're seeing. The first trend that we're seeing is that, um, you know, is around the mobile cloud and the, and the cloud opportunity as it affects mobile, as we've already discussed at length here. Um, the... The second trend that we're also seeing is that as we move out of, not out of, but as we sort of solidify our cross-platform offering, the where where our customers and our developers are pushing for us is to actually add, continue to add value on top of Titanium and continue to add um, extensions and modules and you know and extend the platform into new use cases. Um, NBC is a great example of. Where you know our, the Titanium platform is good, but you know they want Omniture for analytics. They want um, Dart for double click for advertising. Yeah. They want their own custom scheduling widget that allows them to show show, uh, show schedules. And then they want that re on a reusable basis. Um, when we get into the strategy piece, this ability to have an integrated mobile architecture, this ability to reuse components from one application to another application, another application, for us to source them or to or to enable our developer base to create them on a real-time basis to extend the value of Titanium, that's, like if we look like where our company is going, it's all about that, um, you know, going up the stack and adding value on top of the platform. Right. Does that make sense? And, yeah. the, and the cloud certainly factors into it as, you know, additions and extensions and modules to that. Um, they, it all kind of comes together, right? It's the ecosystem. I, I mean, it, 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 so, I mean, I think the whole goal here is that uh, I, the ubiquitous development platform that allows you to uh, ha have shared experiences across, so shared similar experiences across the web, the mobile device, any mobile device, or any basically any screen. Because now we're also talking about television, um, or yep. or that dumb screen in front of you that is going to get smarter because of the mobile devices in front right. of us, right? Yep, yep. Connected TVs and all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's big. And then you start to think about cars, right? And you think yep. about uh, you know not just cars, <laughs> but uh, you know the Internet of Things and and sensors yep. and all those things that are are going to yes. be coming. Absolutely. I mean, why can't my, uh, you know, why can't I just have one iPad app that controls all my black boxes in my living room? I mean, you know, and smart connected devices, that's absolutely where this is going. We're just kind of peeling the onion back layer by layer here on this. So, you know, I've seen some great, great studies and I know, I know you work with IDC and IDC comes out with them and, and, you know, I have a challenge around platform, uh, you know, mm -hmm. hardware versus software, you know, my opinions are, you know, you're, you're looking at operating systems. It's a battle of the operating system now, not so much the hardware. Um, but uh, you know, there's everybody says that 2015 is this cliff where uh, you know uh, mobile mobile growth and innovation will plateau at 2015, mm -hmm. and and right. I think how, how is that even possible? Uh, you know, yeah. maybe phase one right. will plateau right. then, but then you start start talking about you know body sensors and 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 a bunch of mm -hmm. other things that we haven't even thought about yet. Um, yes. 
That's so right. This this industry, nothing's changed for you since you know in the last ten months. You look at this and you think, uh, I mean, we are obviously your investors think so. You guys think so at Accelerator. This is the beginning still, isn't it? We oh, haven't, yeah. we haven't really moved at all. I mean, two years ago we rolled out our first our mobile development platform and we came out and our first two platforms were iOS and Android and everyone kind of looked at us and said Android what the what are you guys doing on Android it was like 1% market share right it was zero right and it was like well you know we we've sort of seen some of this in the past like we're we're forging new ground in terms of the types of experiences and the types of experiences are truly transformative however we're learning from the web, and this sort of transitions into the strategy part of the discussion. We've learned from the web sort of where, how, how this can play out, and there are learnings that we should be applying here. When the web came, and you pointed this out earlier, it was sort of, you know, if you will, forced on us, right? It was sort of one of these things like, oh my God, I, you know, I don't know if I want to really shop online. I don't know about all that sort of stuff. And, you know, but, you know, over time, every single business became, you know, they had a, you know, put their shingle up on the web. You yep. have to. It's table stakes obviously now. And so now and and so now fast forward and 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 there was a maturity, right? Last time we spoke, Rob, we talked about this maturity model. Um, but there was a maturity that happened with the web. Early adopters adopting web was basically brochureware, right? Then as you move, you start accelerating your business and you start thinking about, well, Okay, I need to start adding in, you know, more engaging factors in there, and you know, more, you know, more capabilities in my website, and and eventually you got into transactions that are taking place, right? Right. And transactions on top of the platform. Same sort of things happening with mobile, and so we've evolved from this, you know, app that is a single discrete piece of content that may be indistinguishable from a website into applications that have, you know, the social graph built in, right? Last week was all, you know, Twitter being embedded now in every single app. It's just standard. It's like, you know, do you want to email? Do you want to Twitter? Well, you know, the social graph has to be added into, into every app because that engagement factor goes up. So that's sort of that second phase mobility. And then the, and the third phase, as we talked about, where you're really in, innovating is where transactions are occurring and you're transforming the way that you work with your customers. If you're a retailer, you think about not just the point of sale as the defining moment when you're talking with your customer, but you're thinking about that entire end-to-end -end experience before, during, and after the transaction. If I can connect, that's why Groupon's so powerful, is that if I can connect to, some, to a business with a compelling offer before they're even in my store and, and like elongate that engagement window that really adds richness and, and you know and capability to my transaction. Google and uh, Apple are moving on this whole NFC capability, which is going to fundamentally change the way we're doing payments, you know, at local stores and and our, you know, the camera on the phone is in sense a sensor for overlaying uh, you know, basically a whole digital sheet on top of our physical world, right? And so when you think about mobile and the mobile experiences that you can offer up and you start thinking in that way, then you start saying, well, geez, we're just getting started and daily deals is the first no-brainer thing for us to do. But it certainly gets a lot richer after that, right? It's pretty amazing. Like, oh, uh, you know, when, when you... Uh... I think that the transition, that's a perfect transition into strategy because um, the complexity of mobile and the complexity around bringing mobile into your organization, I mean, th there is a development complexity, but there's also a thinking complexity around this as to why you want to do this and, and what value you have. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are, are, are still looking at mobile as um, the mobile website. You know, mm -hmm. well, it's okay because our, our website uh, is... Uh, you know, we have a website. It's in WordPress, and we've uh, you know built a plugin, or we've uh, you know just installed a plugin that allows you to see our 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 now our WordPress as mobile WordPress. Right. Mobile's done. Right. 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 Exactly. Check. Check. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's I see that a lot, even with some of the design shops uh, and some of the uh, consultancies and advertising and marketing firms uh, in North America. They say, yeah, mobile's a line item that says, yeah, it looks good on a device. Check. Check, and I'm done. Moving yeah. 
<laughs> and I've even had those frightening conversations with companies that say, you know, we'll just hire a marketing intern and they'll take care of the mobile strategy. And right. as I was saying before, that that's, that's really when my heart breaks because right. people are leaving opportunity on the table. Right. I, I, I've spent a lot of time with a, um, a great guy. His name is uh, Gary Schwartz. And, and uh, he, he just sums it up is that, you know, your mobile strategy, if it's not driving brand awareness, which is mm-hmm. basically creating a deeper relationship with, mm-hmm. with your customer, or mm-hmm. if it's not driving tonnage, mm-hmm. you shouldn't be doing it. Right. And, and right. I think that that, uh, that kind of encompasses it. But people are still at that early stage. Companies are still at that early stage where they don't understand why is mobile necessary? Are, are right. you finding, that's what I'm finding. Are you finding that yeah. as well? Yeah. So, so the mobile strategy, anytime you say mobile strategy, you got to start, you know, defining, well, what does that mean? Yeah. And the first thing about that is what is the engagement with your customers or your users that uh, you want to have? And that gets better when you think about a mobile component in it, meaning that how does the context, the engagement and the richness of mobile add to that experience? And how then also does extending your, your information to that experience sort of transform the way that you're, you're thinking about interacting with your customers? So, um, you know, uh, the, the, the late, uh, this late night of Jimmy Fallon app is a good example where uh, Jimmy Fallon actually has, and I use a consumer example, we'll, we'll use some business ones in here as well, but Jimmy Fallon, you know, he has a lovely website. He has a mobile optimized website. But um, what he actually did is he actually said, you know what? I actually want on my show, I want to be able to have people take pictures of themselves or I want to be able to have like this extra little, um, you know, a new app experience. You know, he's got like these things called uh, Jimmy's apps. It's like a little section on his app, on his on inside his app that has all these other little mini fun games like Axl Rose relaxation tapes and other silly stuff, right? It's engagement. It engages you and it engages, it engages loyalty and it keeps you coming back. And then he fe- he ties it into a show where he'll actually feature submissions from hmm. his guest, you know, from, from his viewers on his show. And so, you know, that's a great example of how you can extend into mobile and use mobile for what it's good at, which is context aware, uh, always on, engaging, rich transaction experiences. And so step one, we have, you know, here at Accelerator, what we've sort of formulated over the last bit is sort of a, a four-step process of thinking about building a mobile strategy. And number one is this is answering the question why, and that's this, and that's defining the experience that you want to have with your customer. Because once you define that, then we can start thinking about where is that experience best expressed when it comes to mobile, right? Which gets onto the following steps here. So in that, deciding how you want to interact with, with your customer uh, through mobile, mm-hmm. um, it, it can be simple, right? I mean, it can be sure. just, uh, you know, a, um, a way for them to uh, find you or divine a little bit more yep. information from you. But, but it's uh, whatever that is, you know, ultimately... Your, your broader mobile play uh, doesn't have to, I mean, you don't have to think of an end game. You just have to think of a start game, right? Which is, yeah, yeah. How, how, do, how should I be interacting with these guys today? Or how should they be interacting with us today? Agreed, agreed. And, and you know, and I think we talked about this last time in this form of this, like, uh, mobile maturity model, where it's like, um, everyone's going to start, you know, they're, they're basically three phases, right? I'm exploring mobile and what's possible. Yeah. Okay. So, and that, that's phase number one, exploration. Number two is this acceleration model where I'm accelerating my strategy and I'm thinking about engagement more and engaging applications as defining that experience because now I'm more familiar with it and I'm leveraging those really great, rich capabilities. And then number three is this innovation phase where actually what we see is, um, through a properly developed mobile strategy, you not only are embracing mobile, but you're getting in this hyper growth innovation cycle where it's all about what's the net new experience that I can add? How can I quickly innovate that? How how am I flexible enough to add this new capability into my overall app portfolio? And so if you think about it from those three perspectives, you can sort of identify where you're at today and then you can sort of look to the future in terms of how does that next phase improve my bottom line, deepen my engagements with, you know, with my customers, allow me to, you know, maybe get to market faster, you know, solve those business challenges, right? But it, it is really in those sort of three, three different phases. That, that's certainly how we view it. So, I mean, that, that's really kind of a defining it, right? Decide how you want to 
uh, work with your customers. Um, uh, just a, a question on that: Is it have you found um, you know in your experience is is there a is there a better way? Are you targeting existing customers, or are you, uh, you know, are you mm. using mobile to target existing customers, or is it better to use mobile to find new customers? Is right. there something that you've seen, you know, out of those two situations? Uh, so the answer is both. Yeah. Right. So the let's take uh, so Sugar CRM is one of our customers, um, a really popular open source based uh, CRM uh, solution uh, for companies of all sizes. What they've done is they've actually added mobile into their existing subscriptions. So they're a SaaS-based model, right? So you can get web, you can also get mobile now, just in it, and it becomes additive. So they, they, and, and they do it so they can extend the sales force, right? So they are adding to that experience of their existing customers. And then, you know, but then as they do that, they also open up the capability set so that they're also attracting new customers. So I would, I think a lot of businesses today start with improving their existing customer base's experience by adding mobile to that. And then what they find is that as they get into mobile and they make the most of it, that it becomes a competitive differentiator. And then that in turn adds net new customers uh, to, to the model. I'll also say that on app, you know, this whole thing around app stores, I think we're moving away from app stores as a primary uh, discovery vehicle and we're moving into more of you know you need to have more conventional types and we talked about this last time more conventional types of reaching out and acquiring net new users and part of that is like like what sugar crm has done is basically adding to a train that's already running which is your existing SaaS based business and just making that experience better you think that there's uh, i mean i love that example is that because uh, not only does it it uh you know it, it solidifies your existing customers but there's also that uh uh, you, you you know you never want to hold anybody hostage, and that's not what I'm saying here. Is that but you by by increasing or moving into mobile, you've just added another layer that if they were to leave or decide to leave, it just it it, it it's a little bit more painful for them to go once they've gotten used to having right. this kind of a mobile extension Absolutely. to what they're doing. Absolutely, I mean it, you know if I'm if I'm used to looking at my my leads and opportunities and so forth in my desktop web experience, and now I'm taking that to go, and when I'm at that client you know, meeting and I'm sifting through and I'm looking at all that history and, you know, doing that quick check on, you know, hey, what exactly have I been talking about and kind of getting that briefing. That context is rich, engaging and sticky. And you remember it the next time you're in the next lobby and you're like, oh, geez, yeah, that's right. I better bone up on this on this customer that I'm about to 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 work with. And uh, and so it, it just it becomes uh, what, what's nice is that uh, it becomes this sort of behavioral uh, a change component that you absolutely can't do without uh, going forward. So you're right; it does it does make a nice addition that is extremely sticky. Yeah, I, I love it. And you know, I, I don't think that there's a business out there that 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 can't look at mobile as that way, as as a, just a as a way. If you're a software as a service model, I don't care if you're your CRM company like Sugar mm -hmm. or Salesforce or any of these big guys, or you're like an e-commerce play, you mm -hmm. know, reselling e-commerce platform. This is something that that. Any way that you can keep your customers or um, allow them to extend uh, how they do it onto their mobile device, you've added that layer of stickiness. I think that's yep, great. You got it. so yep. uh, so after you've after you've defined who your customers and what they, what their interest is uh, and how you're going to be able to satisfy them, um, mm -hmm. how, how do you move beyond that? Uh, this is where right. a lot of people kind of struggle with that transition. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. So. So we've so that that was sort of step number one is defining that engagement and that experience and so forth. Now step number two is what knowing that where is that experience best manifested? So the typical reaction you know today you know according to the the model maturity model that we have is that I'm going to start with iPhone. It's it's the it's the no brainer starting point, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the reason why you know we included it out of the gate when we started two years ago. Uh, it's it's a de facto standard. It it allows you to really understand that what's what's really capable in mobile, and so you start with iPhone. Now that has two factors to consider. Number one, obviously that's that's Apple, and you've got Apple's rules to follow, and it's a phone um, experience, which means that it's not uh, potentially as rich as say like a tablet type of form factor, um, but it's a good starting point. So most businesses start with that, not all, but that's a good starting point there. Now. 
Um, as you move forward, though, you, you, you start getting into what's next, what's beyond the iPhone, because I checked that box, that was 2010, yeah. right? I checked the iPhone box in 2010. Now we're in 2011, where Android shipments are surpassing, have surpassed uh, iOS shipments, right? So I have to consider Android, it's got to be there. But I also have another wrinkle, the tablet is defining the new computing experience and at five six seven hundred dollars is at that price point where it, it's you know what is it apple's going to ship like 45 million ipads this year or incredible. some incredible yeah. incredible number right i have to think about that as the next option and that's why if you start on the experience first and your relationship with your customer and how it gets better with mobile then when you move into the next uh, discussion point on mobile strategy, which is your platforms, then uh, and then actually number three is your uh, devices. Yep. Then you start thinking about what is the most appropriate platform for me to be on and the most important device for me to uh, deploy on. So if I want coverage, I might go from iPhone to Android, right? If I want market share, if I want a deeper experience. I might go from, say, like iPhone to iPad, right? right? And, and so that's the decision tree, and it's different for every customer or user, or I mean, I mean you know, every customer or developer and so forth, right? Yeah. So that, that's, that's sort of, that's, if you will, steps two and steps three on, you know, after your experience comes the platforms, after your platforms becomes, quickly becomes the form factor that best, you know, that best references or be best makes the most of my, the experience I want to have with my customers. It's, it's fun, you know, it, it's so, it's so bang on it. I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, so a lot of companies, young companies that are building applications, um, mm -hmm. you know, for-profit companies, hopefully at one point mm -hmm. in some days, and a lot of enterprises that are building their applications. And, and I think it's easier for an enterprise because they look out and they survey their landscape of their own employees and say, okay, well, we're a BlackBerry shop. Yeah. Pretty simple, right? With a few outliers in Android and, and iOS, or we're an iOS shop with a few outline, right. you know, outliers with the other platforms. Uh, but I, I do talk to a lot of uh, companies that build iOS first mm -hmm. uh, and build a very deep, rich experience in iOS and get it right. And they don't, they don't, they don't look at other platforms until they get it right on iOS. Right. And that could take six months. It could take a year. It could take two right. years. Right. And then, then at that point, they start to think, okay, now I'm going to venture out and try to mimic as closely as possible that experience that has been successful on iOS onto Android, onto you know Windows Phone Seven, even onto uh, yep. onto BlackBerry, um, to a lesser and lesser extent these days. But mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, it, it, you know, and certainly uh, iPad fits in the middle of all that uh, for certain companies as well. Uh, so it, it kind of mimics what you're exactly what yep. you're talking about is that yeah. you know prioritize your platform and then figure out what uh, you know the resources uh, or you know. Um, you know, and what what devices it should be on is a secondary yep. piece. Um, That's right. It's 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 really interesting because uh, we talked about this right before we went live. Is that during the web days, it was kind of uh, you had uh, you know the PC world which was massive, and the and mm -hmm. you, know, you know you had the Mac world which was like I think at that point it was like, like less than four percent. Right. across the board. Yeah, barely hanging on. That's yeah. right. Dead. Like without an investment from Microsoft, Apple is insolvent, right? Yep. People right. forget that. Um, and uh, then there was the the, brow the browser battle, which was Netscape mm -hmm. and IE. And it was like Netscape and then and then it became IE as the dominant flavor uh, with, with smaller uh, pockets of browsers like Mozilla um, and Firefox. So uh, it, it was a simple world back then, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. and, it was, and now it's it's the most complex that we've ever made it, right? Because you've got, uh, for especially for you guys, it's like it's laptops or it's desktops, it's tablets, it's all iOS. It's so ta it's the tablets and the phones. It's every incarnation of Android, uh, and so on and so forth. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, wayfinding in this it becomes very difficult, and you have to prioritize here. This is part of the yeah. big strategy, isn't it? That's right. That's right. So, so prioritizing your platforms um, is is that step two. I was actually uh, splitting it out, but but yes, it is it is OSs and it's uh, form factors. Okay. Um, so that, that's sort of step two, uh, and it's all yeah, and it is a prioritization, and it's based off of step one, which is around the experience that you're trying to deliver to your right. customer. Um, what happens after that is now you say, I know the experience I want to have, 
And I know which devices and platforms I want to be on. The next question becomes, how am I going to do this and not kill myself with the resources that I have at my disposal, right? It becomes a question of how. And, and that's where, you know, you, you, you start looking at this sort of fragmentation layer of skills, right? And like, they're just, you know, whether it's uh, for Apple, I've got Java developers, or, you know, I need to have Java developers if I'm thinking about Android or BlackBerry or .NET developers if I'm thinking about Windows um, Phone. And, and you get into a very real, very personal uh, conundrum on how you're going to use your resources or outsource or do some combination thereof and, and it becomes a people problem, right? Um, and that's the next thing you need to tackle. And so, of course, I mean, we have, a, of course, a very, you know, specific point of view on that, that uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, we as an industry have learned something, and that is is that you know the skills and the computer science advances in web technologies have presented the, you know the web or the web uh, architecture, web skill set, and web technology set as a really robust tier one skill set that it does really, really well across multiple platforms and in lightweight types of experiences. And when you think about smartphones and these compact devices and the ability to sort of have an efficient defining way of building applications, web skills and web technologies are certainly a great sort of unifier, if you will, of all these disparate devices, you know, form factors and skill sets and all that sort of stuff. And so as a company at, at Accelerator, we've chosen, and you know, some of the other folks in our space have chosen uh, the web and the web technologies and the web skill set as sort of a way forward for rationalizing your existing skill base and leveraging that as you head into mobile uh, and not having to do arcane things like you know, outsource your future to Bob down the street who happens to have Objective C skills, right? Right, right. So, and by the way, who charges three, four, five hundred dollars an hour? Uh, you know, every time you want to, you know, make that you know change to that app, right? Well, uh, and I, that's a that's a very important piece is that. Uh, because of uh, early days, before you could do this cross-platform, um, before accelerated, I mean, before you could do cross-platform application development um, and make them all look good and functional. Um, I mean, you were talking about thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars per platform for development, and sometimes even BlackBerry they would charge even double that because of the challenge of uh, of working uh, in the BlackBerry environment. So. Um, you, you take that into consideration about, uh, especially around you know evaluating your your resources and which is right. the which is the best the best way to build and uh, I think that's the fourth point for you which is the platform building on the platform right that's right that's right so our so 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 now you've sort of made your your you, you've sort of looked at your resources and how you're going to over the long term you know this is an important point over the long term set your business up correctly from a resourcing perspective, right? And this whole outsource versus in, in-source or this whole idea of even more than outsource versus in-source, what we're finding is this whole idea of controlling your mobile destiny is an implicit point here that I either take my strategy and say, you know what, I'm just going to kick it down the street or I'm actually going to own it. So, so partners very much, you know, systems integrators, they very much play a very important role in this world. But the important point is that you need to own your own mobile destiny here. And that's a, that's a, a very important point here, either developing the applications yourself in-house or at least having some capacity to update your applications or own that entire infrastructure so that you say, my web developers, when they're building a new website, can also turn around and actually update that app and they can do it, you know, in the space of, you know, a couple or three weeks and keep that whole campaign moving. Right. Um, the Jimmy Fallon app is a great example where they, they keep adding Jimmy's apps. We have no participation in this. They, they're doing it themselves. They just keep adding experiences as these real-time updates. And, and they just do it with their same team that's doing their updates to their website. And so it's a single discussion with one web team, and they're doing it for both web and they're doing it for mobile, right? 
Okay, so now now we move into that into that fourth point that you were alluding to, which is uh, the platform or the technology. And and here's here's the important point: whether you choose accelerator or you choose another technology, the important point here is that you're getting reusability, application to application, application feature to feature to feature. Meaning that what you have is what we call an integrated mobile framework, so that um, every new app and every new update doesn't kill you on the round trip cycle to actually maintain that thing, right? So what we found, we have this technology, it's called Titanium Plus. It's, the, it's these extensible modules. And the, 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 the big point out of this whole, you know, what's your platform is, are you, you know, when you build that first app, are you building that first app with the eye that this is it, this is my, you know, magnum opus app, and I shall never build an app ever again. And secondly, are you building this app with the idea that, you know what, I'm never going to touch it, it never needs to get updated, it never needs to, you know, I just, I bought it from this contractor, I'm shipping it and I'm done. And yeah. that never happens because, of course, you know, it, new capabilities happen, new demands from your experience, your customers happen, life happens and you, and you need to think about, you know, an ability to deliver what we call rapid innovation, which is the ability to innovate really, really, really quickly to keep up with not only the pace of mobile, but also with the pace of customer expectation as it relates to mobile. And so your, your, your challenge, and here's the challenge, and you know, you know you've got it right, when you can think about a net new capability that you wanna add, and you think about, you know what, I bet with the platform I've chosen, I could get that out in two weeks. And we could be in market within this month. Right. And you know that you've got it right when you're thinking about it from that perspective versus I've got to spec the thing. That'll take me a month. Then it'll take me another month to source the vendor. Then it'll take me three more months to actually get this update, you know, effectively done. And then, by the way, I have to completely scrap that the next app I bring along. And so what you get into is like you move from a six month decision window down to a sub one month decision window for actually making changes. So it's this platform decision and it's this integrated mobile architecture. What it delivers, in, you know, when you when you're doing it right, is this rapid pace of innovation. And that's what we see with our developers that we work with closely when they're really moving along, they're really updating their app and, and it's not scaring them, right? They're like right. embracing this change and they're updating their application frequently and it's this rapid pace of innovation. They're controlling their own destiny. They're across multiple platforms and they're building the experiences that matter most for their customers. And that's ultimately how we define having a long-term sustainable mobile strategy. You know, just on that last point, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people put um, emphasis on the upfront cost of mobile. Right. Right. So, you know, what's it going to cost in terms of uh, employee time, uh, thinking time, mm -hmm. development costs, all of that combined, marketing costs, and mm -hmm. uh, and they do, they'll even put a check after that, app deployed, check, mobile, but uh, right. talk, if you can, a little bit about the importance of that, as you were saying, that maintenance stream, right, is that right. without that, uh, all the effort that you put up front, wasted? Right. Right, exactly. So I've got my iPhone here, and let me just let me just check today, and uh, you know, so here's my here's my here's my home screen right yep. here, right, and right here on the App Store it says I have 28 updates to my apps on my phone. Yes, I have 28. I think I updated these apps like a month ago or something like that. Yep. But yep. chances are. Everyone is going to be in the same boat. I mean, the refresh cycle on these experiences is extreme, right? And so, you know, it goes to the same sort of flexible, nimble approach that you have to get to. You have to get to some point where being in mobile as a strategy, as, as a long-term strategy, has to be sustainable. It has to, you have to be nimble. You have to have this organizational agility, whatever you want to call it. You have to be able to keep up with the, the pace of change post launch of your app yeah. if you're going to remain relevant in mobile over the long term absolutely and i think you know uh what i've heard a lot of and what i've witnessed is um mobile done right so a great mobile strategy great mobile strategy implemented 
um, and then a great mobile strategy maintained, or right. as you, and and then inno you innovate on it, um, has a has a great impact on a brand, right? That's so right. You, you know it, it goes back to that whole part where it's brand engagement, it's customer engagement, it's it's driving mm -hmm. revenue, it's driving tonnage, it's all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a great mobile strategy uh, uh, deployed and then abandoned hurts brands, and then people yeah. don't get that. Is that if, right. if people are not having a good experience, if you're getting ones and two stars on your apps, or you know people are complaining about it, and you're not engaged in mobile, you haven't committed to it. That isn't just uh, a forget away, you know, forget about it, a throw right. away. This is brand deterioration, isn't it? Yeah. No, a a absolutely, and it's not going to get any better, right? I mean, Q4 of last year, we bridged the Rubicon. We shipped more as a, you know, as a planet, right? We shipped more smartphones than we did laptops. Yeah. And so we're we are we're well into mobile, obviously, and mobile is dominating the shipments. And so, so that 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 ship has sailed. And so to keep up with that. You have to get to this point where it becomes not that initial upfront investment as you're talking about, but this ongoing, repeatable, scalable approach to being in mobile, responding to those different changes, you know, leveraging those those resources, you know, building those great experiences, and it's a it's a long term you know uh, it's a long term strategy that ultimately has to be integrated into your overall digital strategy, right? The 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 two are are not two separate. Entities, they are one unified entity. That's the only way this will ab absolutely work in the long term. Yeah, I mean that deep commitment has, has got to be there, uh, or don't don't do it because it, it'll yeah, be just exactly it'll be too painful. You'll waste a lot of money, a lot of effort, and a lot of uh, goodwill with your customers. Um, That's right. You, you might turn them off. So if I was to ask you, like you know, you know, uh, so after all of this, uh, I mean. What what can people do right now? Are there one or two things that that like tactical things in, in mobile strategy that people can start doing this moment uh, right. to kind of move towards that? That that they maybe don't have the background, they don't have the wherewithal or the the corporate buy-in, but they want to start moving on it. Right, right. Okay, so so okay, so a couple of really tangible things that you can do. Number one is think about your business today. Let's 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 take the online version of your business and think about how it gets better. And more engaging, more relevant when you add in a mobile component. In other words, don't think of mobile as brochureware, right? Mm -hmm. This is not your mobile website as an app or your mobile website as a mobile website, or your, your, your website as a mobile website. This is how does it get better, right? And then, so that's that's number one, because you're thinking about things around the capabilities here. The you know, how does the camera add, you know, interactivity? How does the social graph in mobile? How does geo positioning? How, how do all these capabilities add to that experience? That's number one. Number two is, okay, what does that mean in terms of like, you know, my ability to, you know, how do I think about moving from a three-tier web architecture into effectively becoming my own cloud service? Because that's that's all, that's effectively where I'm going to have to go to be in mobile is move from a three-tier web architecture with a single discrete viewpoint of the desktop web to my you know my blogs, my photos, my videos, my content, my software has to be accessible everywhere. So you need to think about that architectural change, right? We're talking about architecture issues, right? And experience issues. Then you start moving into some of the other, you know, mobile strategy pieces that we talked about in terms of, you know, okay, prioritizing my platforms that I'm going to be on, the device types that I want to be on, thinking through that, talking to my friends, my customers, you know, about, um, you know, the most important pieces, you know, platforms for me to start with and then to migrate to so I have a plan. And then the downstream impact of that. How do I get my people? my technology in place so that I'm able to react really, really quickly, right? And and ultimately get into this pace of innovation that is where I'm embracing what mobile has to offer and I'm not frightened by it. And and you know, and that that's certainly, you know, we we certainly help there. We um, as we were saying before the call, we give initially a permission to think about mobile and then over a longer period of time we provide that sort of scalable way of actually maintaining that mobile strategy over an extended you know one two five year and beyond period of time okay I love it very tangible and and I mean for for, for those people who are who are listening or watching and and uh, or who don't 
completely understand or are trying to convince uh, you know um, their organization that mobile is important you just look at some of the announcements that have come out over the last number of days starting with with Apple and the iCloud service and how important mm-hmm. that is to their to their uh, to the, for their company going forward but you also start to think about the that the mobile first mantra that we've heard out of a lot of these companies and you see it in the way that Apple is now bringing the App Store to the desktop right yeah. so the Mac right. App Store right that's right. the, the way that they're taking gestures from the tablet and bringing that into the laptop. So it is a mobile first. Look, we, we built this on a mobile thing, but there's an implication uh, on the desktop. The way that Google, uh, you know, started doing voice search on the on the handheld, and now mm-hmm. we're doing voice search, uh, you know, on the on the web version. Mm-hmm. This is the influence that mobile is having. It's now it's coming back. The innovation that's happened on that, it's now coming back into the web world and impl- yep. impacting the web world number of other companies around that are you know building search or, or or other services are um like even your hotel finder right yeah like that stuff right. doesn't exist unless yeah. it's mobile yeah you know, I mean, you, and you look at like now uh, windows 8 right yeah. you know windows 8 you know has a very strong connection to tablet devices yeah. you look at it and you'd say wow you would almost assume that windows 8 is built from the ground up for you know these you know new tablet interactive touch types of devices right so yeah, yeah it's everywhere and we're just, you know, we've always maintained this, uh, you, you know, uh, even though 10 months have, have uh, gone between our, our conversations around uh, on, on film is that, um, that we're still at the very beginning. And, and yep. uh, you yep. know, so this is still an experimentation period. But uh, what, we're, what we're definitely seeing is that embracing mobile in the right way and over mm-hmm. a long haul with a deep strategy uh, that's rooted to your organization mm-hmm. and all your other goals that you have within your organization uh, you can succeed. It can have a huge impact on your bottom line or your customer engagement. Absolutely, absolutely, and it and it and it won't kill you. Uh, and you, and you can embrace mobile, right? And it's not it's not that box that you check. It's not that thing you do once and you never come back to again. It's a it's a sustainable long term engagement with your customers and and driving real you know ROI out of that you know that investment that is you know leveraging everything that you already have. And then making the most of the experience that mobile brings to to bear on the situation. Love it, love it. And the the best part of this whole conversation is that you guys have a white paper, like yes. the mini IDC now called Accelerator, getting into the analyst space uh, and and putting together, I mean, best practices for for mobile strategy, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. And, and it'll be available through your uh, through your site there, Rob. Right. Yep. Um, and so we do. It's called uh, Four Steps for Building a Mobile Strategy. Um, it summarizes, if you will, the discussion we just had. You can use it both as a refresher after this video call, uh, or you can pass it to your boss and say, "Hey, this is something that we should take a look at. You know, we should talk to the accelerator guys. They're really sort of thinking about at a deep, deep level." the structural issues that are there with mobile, the opportunity, and then the fragmentation risk and how you can mitigate that. Uh, and that's what this uh, paper uh, provides, a free download uh, straight off of your uh, st- straight off of your site there, Rob. I love it. Well, you know, and, and I think that it's very valuable as a, as a way to encapsulate the things that you need to know in order to be able to, to yep. bring it in or, 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 uh, or sell it internally. Exactly. Um, but for you guys, I mean, uh, the only pitch I can say is like you know there's a hundred one point five million developers twenty two thousand apps being developed on the uh, yeah. Accelerator uh, platform on Titanium. Um, go to Accelerator dot com. Um, That's right. And you know this is a an unbiased uh, view of this uh, simply because I've watched over the last number of years you guys develop and and you know just from an education standpoint a support standpoint the fact that you can download and play with it if there's a free a free version of it go. Mm-hmm. Like there's mm-hmm. nothing stopping anybody right now. So. That's right. That's right. Go download. You know, download Titanium if you're a developer listening to this. If you're a creative director in an ad agency, or you're a you're a you know you've got uh, you know responsibilities for digital, and you're thinking about mobile. Um, you know, we are also you know starting to engage more and more with you know we have a professional services team in in house. We have partners and so forth where we can help you through the, these four steps of building that mobile strategy. Because, and we can be with you uh, every step of that way. So. I love it. I love it. Scott, you know, um, I, I figure I, I said this last time, but I, I think I could probably talk to you for days on end. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, I think we're into like hour 15 of this conversation. Exactly. Kindred, kindred, kindred spirits here, Rob. Well, I, I think it's just, it just it emanates from that passion of mobile. And I, and I know you have it. You know I have it. And uh, it's something that we uh, we share. And, and um, I, I love these conversations. And I yeah. really, really, really appreciate you spending uh, spending this hour uh, going through this um, and enlightening enlightening me again, as always, yeah. and uh, offering some you know some insight into this for, for the Untethered.tv viewers. You really bet. appreciate it. Let's uh, let's uh, do it again, okay? I, absolutely, absolutely, right. and I anticipate this one will be a well watched uh, video as well. Right. Uh, so I've been speaking with uh, Scott Schwartzoff, who is the VP of Marketing uh, for uh, Accelerate. He's also in charge of uh, developer relations. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to Accelerator.com, take a look at Titanium. Look up, you'll see a link directly above uh, us to the uh, white paper, right up there somewhere, right, maybe over there. <laughs> um, for the white paper for you to download free give it a view uh give it a read and then start implementing that's that's the only thing that we can ask you just start get, implementing get the it. mobile space get into uh, it it's a lot of fun All don't right. miss it <laughs> thanks very much Rob. thank you scott thank you guys for watching and listening wherever you are really appreciate it if you have any feedback untether at gmail.com we'll see you next time on untether.tv bye